Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to take your old VHS tapes and either watch them on your computer or record them on your computer so that you have digital file backups of your VHS tapes. Now you might be sitting out there wondering, now why in the world would I want to do this? If I've got my VHS tapes, I've got my VCR, I can just sit and watch them and you can. The nice thing about this is some of these old VHS tapes maybe have home movies on them. When you've got them in a digital format, it's a whole lot easier to share those old home uh, videos with other people or post them on the web, YouTube, something like that. That's one of the nice things about digital. The other thing is it gives you a backup. I'm not telling anybody to get rid of their VHS tapes. I'm not telling you to get rid of your VCR, but what this will allow you to do is if you wanted to record copies of them, you could do that. You'd have a digital file, a, usually .mp4 is gonna be the format people choose. And you can back that up on an external hard drive, put it in a safety deposit box. You've got all of those home movies saved and backed up in another format besides VHS. A couple of things I'm going to say before I start my video. I tend to be a talker, so don't give me too many thumbs downs if I talk too much in this video. I'm going to go slow in this video because my assumption is a lot of people out there who even know what a VHS tape might be older in age. They might be uh, not as computer techy, so I'm going to try and do this as basic as possible. The other thing I'll tell you up front is it's going to cost you about $50 if you want to follow my format. So if you don't want to watch it at this point, go ahead and turn off the video. The nice thing about my option is it's going to cost you $50. All of the items I'm going to be showing you today, you can buy on Amazon. You've got a 30-day return policy. If it doesn't work for you, return them to Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything. So that's what I'll say. Let's go ahead and get started with everything you're going to need. Now, in the $50 cost, the one thing I didn't include with something that you might not have, but hopefully you do, and that's a VCR. You've got to have a VCR because we have to have something that we can play our old VHS tapes in, and the only thing you can use is a VCR for that. If you don't have a VCR, garage sales, Goodwill, those are good places to look for them. You can still find them around. They're just getting a little bit uh, harder to find these days. So I'll put the VCR here to the side. The next thing that we're going to need is something that I did include in the $50 uh, total. It's included, but hopefully you already have these if you've got a VCR. These are RCA audio video cables. These are the old school cables that you needed in order to hook your VCR up to a TV and watch the VCR. If you don't have them, everything I'm gonna be showing in you here, I'm gonna put links in my description. You can go buy them off of Amazon. These are $7.50 off of Amazon. If you can find them somewhere else cheaper, go for it. But that was the cheapest that I found. So we're going to need those. I'm going to show you all the items first, then we're going to talk about how to hook them up, and then we're going to get on the computer and we're going to uh, take a look at our VHS tapes on the computer. The next thing you're going to need is what's called a RCA to HDMI converter. I'll uh, say this, it's $14.50. I'm not going to go into the specifics of it until we start setting this up. But $14.50, you're going to need that gadget. You're going to need an HDMI cable. Again, this is part of that $50 total. If you don't have one already, you can get these for anywhere from $6 and up, depending on how long of a cable you'll want. I'll say this, the link that I'm gonna put in my description is for an Amazon basic cable that's only three feet long. In most cases, or at least with my setup, I have my VCR right next to my computer, so I wouldn't recommend a very long cable, but if you need a longer one, you can do that. This is something most of you probably already have, just a regular HDMI cable. And then last but not least, you're gonna need what's called an HDMI to USB capture card. This is the most expensive item. This is gonna be $20. Um, and that's the last item that we need. Let's talk about everything uh, and how it goes together. We're gonna to hook up all of these items. We're gonna plug it into our computer. And then there is a software you're gonna to have to put on your computer called OBS Studio that's totally free. Now, I know a lot of people start cringing when they have to put a software on their computer. This is a free software. There's no spyware, there's no ads, nothing like that. This is the number one software that YouTube broadcasters and video gamers use to capture their video games. There are other softwares you can use. You can try other ones, but this is the one that I use and it's totally free. So that's the one that I'm gonna be recommending and showing you today. So let's talk about how we're gonna hook all these items up. First and foremost, let's look at our VCR. Let's get all this stuff out of the way and we're gonna go in order. This part you should know. You've got your RCA audio video cables. Your VCR will usually have audio video inputs in the front and in the back. You're usually going to wanna to go to the back ones 
and you're gonna simply do some color coding here. Yellow to yellow, red to red, and white to white. This part you can actually test on your uh, TV if you wanna make sure you've got it right. You can plug these in ends into your TV, turn on your VCR, make sure you can hear it, make sure you can see it, and you'll know you've got it right. But there's really no, no way to uh, mess it up. It's also a good idea to do that just to make sure your VCR is working and playing your tapes. But that's the first step. The RCA audio video cables to the inputs on the back of your VCR. Now you've got these other ends of your audio video cables. What we're going to do with those is we are going to plug them in to this gadget that I showed you earlier. It's very simple. This gadget is going to have a cable that connects to it. It's just simply a USB cable. That's going to be what powers this device. Then, just like your VCR, it's going to have inputs on it for audio and video. We're going to do some color coding here, yellow to yellow, red to red, white to white. What this is doing is it's taking the data from your VCR, it's running, running it into the input of a converter box, and the converter box has an output that's an HDMI. It's converting your uh, non-HD content and gonna put it in a format that can be read with HDMI. So, as you might expect, we're gonna take our HDMI cable, we're gonna plug one end of it into the output of this converter box. So now at this point, everything's connected, but we've got an open end of our HDMI cable. We're gonna simply take that, and we are going to plug it into the input of the HDMI video capture card. There's really no way to mess this up. The other end is a USB end, so, there's only one place you can really plug it in. Now all this is doing is we've got our RCA cables taking our VCR data, converting them to an HDMI format. Now this thing is taking the HDMI format and it's allowing us to plug it into our computer use, using a USB port. Now a lot of people are gonna be sitting out there and saying, wait a minute, couldn't I just take the HDMI cord and plug it into my computer? You can try that. I had to buy this gadget in order for it to work on my computer. Everything I'm showing you here, guys, I'm trying to make it as cheap as possible. I'm trying to make it work. I would follow the steps of what I'm doing first, get it to work, and if you wanna try and reconfigure or do other things, go for it. This, so now what we have is a couple things. We've got a USB cable that's dangling off of our white box here. That's going to get plugged in either to our computer or to a wall outlet we just need to power this box with that USB cable. The next thing we have is we have this other USB cable that's coming off of our little HDMI video capture card. This has to be plugged into our computer. You can't plug this into a wall outlet because our computer is going to be reading this data to display it in OBS Studio. And then aside from that, you simply have your electrical cord for your uh, VCR, you need to plug that into a wall outlet because we have to give power to our VCR so it can play the tapes. So let's go plug all those things in. Let's get on the computer. Let's go through the settings of OBS Studio and watch our VHS tapes. Okay, so now we've got everything plugged in and connected and we are on our computer. As I mentioned before, you're gonna have to have a software on your computer that can read the input coming from your VCR. There are various softwares out there the one that I recommend is called OBS Studio. The website is obsproject.com. OBS Studio is an open broadcast soft, uh, software. It is totally free. You don't need an account to download it or use it. There's not a free version and a paid version. This is kind of the industry standard software for people who are doing video recording and live streaming. It's also the easiest software out there that I've found to use. If you ever go on YouTube or if your kids play video games and they load them on the internet, most of your uh, gamers are using OBS Studio for that kind of stuff. When you go to the website, it's going to look just like this. You've got three options in the middle. If you are a Windows user, you would click on the Windows option. If you're an Apple user, you would click on app, uh, the Mac OS version. And if you're running Linux, you would click on the Linux one. Most people are probably going to be Windows. Maybe a few people out there using a Mac would need the um, Apple version. So when you download the software, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. This is what it's going to look like when you open the software on your computer. It's basically just going to be a black screen for you. The first thing I would do before we get started is if you go up to the menu bar up here, click on File, then click on Settings, 
and then click on output. Now there's a lot of things you can do in OBS Studio setting wise. The only thing that I would recommend is to look at this. Uh, under output there's a section called recording and then you'll see there's a section called recording path. This is going to be the location on your computer should you decide to watch your VHS tapes and record what you're seeing. This is the path on your computer that that recording file will be stored to. If you don't like the path, you can click on the browse button on the right hand side and you can choose any path you want to. You'll notice I've got mine going to my E drive. That is an external hard drive that I've got plugged into my computer. You don't have to uh, record your whole VHS tape, but some of you might want to put in a VHS tape and record the whole thing. If you do that, your file size can get rather large. A whole VHS tape is probably going to run you about 20 gigs on your computer and that's where having an external hard drive works pretty well because you usually have a little bit more storage on those but you don't have to you can you can uh, set your recording path to anywhere you want on your computer that's just some FYI the other thing that you might want to look at is the recording format different people like different video files as far as recording format I've got mine set to mp4 but if you'd rather have a .mov or .mkv file whatever you want these are your options that's where you would choose that <clears throat> so I've got mine set I've got my recording format. I like the location. The only reason you're looking at the location is a lot of people will go in, start recording their content, and then they can't figure out where it is on their computer. This is where it's going to go to, is whatever is your recording path. So let's go ahead and click OK. That's just kind of some FYI. Now we are ready to add our VCR. If you look down here in the bottom, there's a section for sources. Now before I click anything here, the thing I would recommend is turn on your VCR, put in a VHS tape, and go ahead and hit play. You're not going to see anything and you're not going to hear anything, but it will make it easy, easier for us to find the VCR if there's something actually playing so we know we're hitting the right source. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on my VCR. And now we're going to go look for our source. I'm going to click on the plus button under sources. There's going to be a listing that's going to come up. The one you're going to want to choose is video capture device. It's going to come up and say, do you want to create a new one or add an existing one? You can simply click OK here. If you wanted to rename it for some reason, you can rename it to anything you want. I'm going to put VCR, but again, you could simply just click OK. You'll notice it put a source down here. When this window comes up, the properties for your source, it's usually going to be pointing to whatever webcam or maybe, you know, microphone or something like that you've got on your computer. You're going to click on the device and you're going to change it to USB video. That's what you're looking for. When you make that change, if everything is connected right and your VCR is playing, you should be seeing what is on your VCR right now. I'm going to click OK and I am sitting on my computer watching my VCR right now. Now I'm not hearing any sound, but if you look down here under the mic auxiliary, you can see that there is some sound coming through. If I was to start recording right now, it will capture what I'm watching as well as the sound that is coming from my VCR. What's nice is even though I'm talking, even though I'm on my computer doing other things, because our source is just looking at our VCR, it's just going to capture the sound coming from your VCR. And that's kind of a nice thing because you can be recording your VCR on your computer while you're still doing work or on a conference call and none of that stuff will get captured. But maybe you're sitting out there and you say, well, that's great, but I want to actually hear what I'm watching, uh, not only just see it. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. So we should have a video file out there that we can look at. You don't have to record. The recording feature is optional. If you just want to sit and watch your old VHS tapes, you can totally do that. Again, if you want to record, just simply click Start Recording over here. And once you're done recording, it'll uh, give you the option to stop it and press Stop. If you want to listen to your sound while you're watching your VHS tapes, if you click on this little gear box uh, down here by the audio mixer next to Mic Auxiliary, then choose Advanced File Properties. When it comes up next to Mic Auxiliary, switch it from Monitor Off to Monitor and Output. And once we do that, we can hear the sound playing from our VCR. And now we're sitting and watching our VHS tape and listening to it on our computer. So I'm going to go ahead and click Stop on my VCR. You'll notice that we see that it's pointing at our VCR, so anything you do on your VCR, you're going to be seeing it on your computer. I'm also going to go, go ahead and I'm going to close OBS Studio. 
I'm going to open up the location of the path that we recorded, we sent our recording to. Now, remember when we first went to OBS and I started playing my VHS tape, we started recording. Even though we didn't have the sound turned on to where we could hear it, we should hear the sound in this recording file. I'm going to double click it. You can see what the recording files look like. Hallmark blush and bears for $6.95 when you buy three cards. Where? Only a Hallmark gold crown. Imagine what's in store. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. You'll notice that we got the sound even though we weren't hearing it. Um, so no matter what, your recordings will have the sound. We've got our recording from our VHS tape. If you noticed, the sound quality was very good. There was no lag or anything like that. It's basically uh, just a clean copy from your VHS tape. The nice thing is it's also an MP4 format. So now I can save it on an external hard drive. I can load it on the internet. I can email it to somebody. We've got a format that we can actually share. The other thing I did want to mention is let's go ahead and open OBS Studio again. The nice thing about OBS Studio is once you have it all set up, it remembers all of your settings. So I didn't have to go in here and re-add my source or do anything like that. It remembers my configuration from the last time I used it. All I have to do is simply have a VHS tape in, hit play on my VCR, and we're ready to continue on. I hope the video helps. Do me a favor, if this video works for you, please give me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I don't like asking for likes or subscriptions, but the more likes I get, it puts my video out there uh, more visible to help other people that are trying to do this. The other thing is if you have problems or uh, something doesn't work right, you're having issues, post comments in the video. I'd be happy to jump in and help you out. And that also helps, gives other people kind of a resource in case they're having the same issues that you might have had. I hope the video helps. Enjoy watching your VHS tapes.